renowned supermodel Giselle Bunchen is also a philanthropist and a wellness advocate who's taking you into her family kitchen with her new book, Nourish Simple Families to Simple Recipes to Empower Your Body and Feed Your Soul. Please welcome Giselle Bunchen. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. 20 years? She well, just told me it was 20 years. 20 I'm like, years. oh my gosh. The 20 last years time you saw each other? 20 yeah. years ago. It just was oh like, show 20 years you ago. You blink and it's like, wow. I remember I was here 20 years ago with the but show. You know what? You, guys the, you know what? Just now the bitch still looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> but she knew to bring us food, which I can which appreciate. <laughs> Make but, sure I feed you guys and you guys with healthy food yes. and delicious. Oh, yeah. Nutritious and delicious. Okay. Yes. Well, and you write in the book about your journey growing up in a small town in Brazil to then be being signed as a model at just 14 and then becoming one of the biggest supermodels of in the world. Mm -hmm. But you say that the relation, so from the outside, that looks like a perfect life to everyone It was a else. long journey. It was a long journey, <laughs> and that's summed up. But yes. you said that the relationship you had with food was contributing to anxiety and depression, oh. mm. and you felt like you were dying. Well, I, I had severe depression and panic attacks in my early 20s, but I had no idea that it was correlated with my lifestyle and food was a big part of it. Maybe it had to do with the fact that you left your family at 14. <laughs> Did you think of that? You know, I actually was <laughs> loving, I felt like really independent. Yeah. You know, I was emancipated at 14, yeah, you know, and wow. I was living in Japan and then to New York at 15. And, but I, I, I thought it was an amazing life. I was working seven days a week and I was in the hamster wheel and I just wasn't conscious. You know, when you're 14, what do you know? Yeah. And you go into the world and I just, I felt like very grateful that I had a job and I was traveling the world and I, I wasn't really paying attention. You know, I was just like going like a hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And until like I started having severe panic attacks in my early twenties, and I didn't know what to do. And it's been over a year and a half and I was going to all the specialists mm -hmm. and mm. I just wanted to, I wanted to feel better. I didn't know what to do. So I found this amazing naturopath and, and he said to me, Giselle, we have to change your diet. And I was like, diet, what does that have to do with my panic attack? Yeah. And he's like, no, it has everything to do with it. Yeah. So he's like, listen, the way you eat, then he, I told him about my day. I drink, I smoke, I, I start, I have coffee, I ha you know, whatever. And, he's, uh, you. and he says, listen, adrenalina. He called me adrenalina. He's like, stop right there. He says, you're not sleeping. You're, you're like in different time zones all the mm -hmm. time. You're eating Garbage. like Pizza. terrible yeah. all day. I mean, I was the type of person who was just, as long as it's in the supermarket, it's great for me to eat. Anything, anything, you know, I was just like, let me eat it. And, I, you know, with comfort food, you're traveling, you're tired. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're just like... French fries taste really good when you're tired. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and chocolate and cookies, you know, it's all really that good. stuff. I know. So, basically, I, I, I was just eating everything and not conscious. And he says, we're going to have to change your diet. We're going to have to have at least eight hours of sleep. And we're going to have to exercise daily. Wow. If you do those, those three things, you're going to feel better. After having a year and a half of, like, I would say one of the worst times in my life, I cha everything changed. I, like, I became a different person. I, sp I started practicing meditation. Mm -hmm. I started practicing yoga. I started practicing breath work. And it's incredible how just by changing, we're habitual beings, so we're gonna be, you know, if we do something every day, we're just mm -hmm. gonna be comfortable with that and continue doing that, which is what I was doing. But what I was doing was actually destroying my health and yeah. creating the condition I was in, but I wasn't correlating until he told me, until I experienced it in my own body. Well, so it was the first time I started experiencing with food, you know? Well, let's talk about the food because you have this spread here and <laughs> our viewers can't tell, but it smells really good. <laughs> um, you're sharing the way you eat with your family in this new cookbook. Tell us about the food we have on the, the table here. To be honest, I've already been dipping into the dip, so I really <laughs> want to know. Dip is good. Yeah, yeah. what's yeah. the dip? So that, dips. oh, this is the almond, it's like the sesame almond it's one. It's, it's it's really yummy. It's good. Oh, it's um, really good. But I mean, it's all, it's like a combination. Food for me, it's like, it's medicine. Like let that food be your medicine, right? So I think mm -hmm. when we eat foods that kind of, either some foods are gonna take our energy away and some foods will give us energy. And we mm -hmm. have to just feel when we eat it. And I think I try to be vegetarian. I try to be raw. I try to be all these different things in my 20 years yeah. experimenting. Right. And what this book is is a mixture of, veg uh, you know, vegetable spring rolls, and there's the different forms of it with the different oh, dips so that's of a it. Vegetable spring. Yeah, roll. there is one. Well, don't you think that one of the problems with good, good eating is the preparation that takes a lot of time? People are busy. So this my, takes time to do. My mom was the queen of that because yeah. my mom was a cashier in a bank and she worked all her life mm -hmm. and she had six kids, right? Wow. So my mom was. 
to prep on the weekends. And yeah. we had a, a, <laughs> like a menu for the week on the fridge. It was like a piece of paper, and I talk about that in the book. I think uh -huh. the times we end up eating things that are not healthy for us is because we're starving. We come home, we're like, anything. Yeah. Yeah. You open the yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But if you have meal planning, it's huge. And I, and I kind of talk about it in the book, and I give ideas for a meal plan for like a week. But you do whatever you like. It's yeah. just ideas, that's right? Good. No, that's this a good book idea. is just like an introduction of like things you can think of. Because sometimes cooking feels overwhelming. You yeah. think like, you know, or they think my kid is not going to like that right. because... But my kids love all this stuff, yeah. you know? And you have, like, you know, your secret ingredients that you have to put on stuff. Right. My mom was always, like, trying to put the vegetables inside, like, the frittata or something. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, now she's going to eat the vegetables. Cut them really little. Yeah. Like, I have the golden milk cookies. Like, this, I have a special ingredient, which is this Gaia herbs, like, um, oh, the golden milk, good. which yes. has turmeric, which has cardamom. It has great stuff for very you. For but you. I put it in a cookie. Smart. So it's like... Hey, do you want a cookie? What's, what's the green sauce? And they sauce? have no idea that it's like great stuff yeah, in right. it for what them. Is, what so. is the green sauce? This is the mint sauce. There is a few different sauces in there. Mm -hmm. This is usually like I have a cauliflower, like a roasted cauliflower. Mm -hmm. I put that in there. It's delicious. Very good. For the spring rolls, I love this one. I have the tahini. We don't have the tahini one here, but that's my favorite what one for the spring rolls. What do you Okay, I shouldn't be eating this all time. <laughs> like, my mom would be like, what are you doing? And this tastes good. It tastes yeah, like a good. real cookie, but it but it's, it is a real cookie. Yeah, it's it's real. But it's a healthier cookie, But there's cookie, probably right? no sugar in no, it, No, but there's right? something sweet no. about it. What is okay, it? Okay, so my problem. sugar sugar could be a great thing if it's not Too much. the chemical white, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So dates, my favorite thing to sweeten things. Ah, yeah. nice. Yep. And oh, dates, dates are I'm amazing. Smart. Yeah. Honey, yes. your local honey, not only is great for like sweetened things, but it's great for allergies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, they say if you eat local honey yes. from where you're from, yep. you help so much with your allergies. Because so you can yeah. sweeten yeah. with stuff yeah. that still tastes, I mean, you wouldn't say this is not sweet and no. not yummy. And yeah. you help the bees. And, and the bees are the pollinizers. The bees, yeah. It's a whole cycle, right? They're the, the bees bee pollinators. Die, we die. So I, exactly. I want to ask you, because you're such a philanthropist, um, there's something else you're very passionate in addition to food, which is working with the Lotus House, which is the yes. nation's largest oh. women's shelter. Love it. Can you, what can you tell us about working for them and why it's so important to okay, you? Okay, Constance is like my... I, 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 and she's like my hero because I think there is nothing more amazing when we can help lift other people up. And she helps lift, you know, as women. Yeah. I feel like I'm with my sisters here yeah. in my house. Whoa. It's like six of us and my mom, so it's like seven women. <laughs> I grew up this way and we always like helped each other and love yeah. each other, my sisters and I. And sometimes it's not like that in the world. You know, sometimes we're like so self. Yes. Yeah. Absorbed, and this woman is an angel. She created it. It's going to be 20 years this okay. year. The Lotus House, and oh. it's the largest woman's shelter in America. Not only she has helped over 9,000 women and children yeah. that she basically takes from the streets yeah. and reintroduces back into the communities by teaching them a craft. And after six months, usually, they go and they have a job, oh. and she, it gives them their dignity back and their yeah. opportunity in life back. You know, they're, they're outcasts. You know, they're in the streets. I mean, it's. It's incredible her work, and not only she does the amazing Lotus House, which is like, like I think it's something like 87% of women never go back to the streets, oh, wow. which is insane. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> and so I love it so much that I'm part of the board, right. and I'm just yeah. like there all they the time. Do, like they, they're they amazing. And now she has like a whole with all the women's shelter in America. She's mm -hmm. connecting with all of them and creating like a group where she like shares with them all the, all, everything that's yeah. working. Yeah. It's, so it's all about it's lifting each other up. I think yeah. that's what we need and to do every this, day. That's yeah. what the book And is love about. more. That's right. Yeah. So our thanks to Giselle like Bunch. <laughs> yeah. Her new book, Nurse, will be out on March 26th. But you all look so nice and you look like you should use some help. Would you like the book? Yeah.